In this session we will learn about scripts and functions in Scilab. Console is an interpreter where codes or functions entered are executed immediately and can be rerun by using history browser, but to create modular programs we need to store codes in separate files. Scripts are external files that are used to store program codes or instructions, which we can edit through the text editor and execute the script in the console. Synotes is a text editor within Scilab for writing program codes and has good code formatting capabilities. We can start the editor by entering editor in console and editor window shows up. It has basic text editing features used for formatting the code. From the format menu we can use commands to format the code like giving proper indentation, adding or removing comments. From the options menu, we can use preferences dialog to modify the general settings of the editor. We can also use any external editor instead of Synotes to write programs for Scilab. Let's write a small program to understand the working of the editor. We define some variables and use elementary functions. We can save this code for future use. While saving, extension of the file should be SCE. To execute this script we can press the play button in the editor. Functions are used to break down code into smaller units and make programs more readable. It can take values as arguments and return values as output. They can be stored in separate files, or inside a single script file, and can access global variables defined in the Scilab environment. We can also define new local variables inside the function. In Scilab, we define a function by using keyword function followed by an output arguments list, then function name, followed by input arguments list. The end function keyword marks the end of the function. To use any external function we need to load the function into Scilab. We do this by calling get d function. The get d function loads all the function files in the specified directory for use in Scilab. In the editor, we define a function named add with two arguments a and b. The add function adds the two values and returns the result as output. Let's save this function in the working directory in a separate file with extension SCI. Now we define two variables in the console and call the add function and pass the variables as arguments. To use the function we must load the function into Scilab using exec command. The function returns the results and it's printed in the console. Another important aspect is, to understand the scope of the variables used in the function being called. Variables defined inside the function, are local to that function and termed as local variables. Variables defined in the Scilab environment, with global keyword are global variables which can be accessed by any function. Let us see how local and global variables are defined in the program. Here we have a function named calculate with single input argument. We have defined a variable sum both inside and outside of the function, and assigned a value of 0 to it. The variable sum outside the function is defined using global keyword. 
Now we execute the script which calls the calculate function. In the output, we see that the sum variable outside the function is still zero. This means that the sum variable inside the function is modified, and the sum variable outside the function is not altered. In the second function, we use global keyword for the variable sum, defined inside the function. This way we are accessing the globally defined variable sum using global keyword. Now we execute the script which calls the calculate function. In the output we see that the global variable sum is having a value of 10. Variables defined inside functions with global keyword, will modify the global variables, defined in the Scilab environment. Sometimes we may not know the number of arguments to be passed in advance to a function. In that situation we can pass comma separated values as arguments to that function. The length of the argument list varies as per the calling program. In the same manner we can get variable number of output arguments from a function. To define a function accepting or returning variable number of arguments, the function signature should have varg in as input argument and varg out as output argument. Let's see an example of variable arguments. We define a function with varg in and varg out as input and output arguments. We access the input arguments from the varg in object and display it in the console. In the function we define additional variables and assign it to the varg out variable. When we execute the function, we need to define the number of input arguments passed to the function, and number of output arguments required as shown. In the output, we can see that variables a, b and c take values from the varg out variable of the function. Here we will discuss few advanced functions available in Scilab. argn function is used to get the number of input or output arguments present in the function call. It is used in function definitions, for checking required number of arguments passed to that function. In the output we can see the values of LHS and RHS variables, which show the number of input and output arguments to the function. Def function is used to define functions from instructions written in text string. The string is formatted as a function definition with input and output arguments along with the function body. Let's define the add function using def command, which we saw earlier. The function definition line is the first argument and the function body is the second argument. We can call the add function as a normal function. exec command executes a script file or a function definition file given by the path argument exec str command executes instructions written in text strings here we define string variables x equals 5 y equals 10 and res equals x plus y we put these in a string matrix variable named str we can now execute this script using exec str command in the variable browser, we can see the variables x, y, and the result variable res. That brings us to the end of this session. Thank you for your interest and attention.